Hey everyone, and welcome to CyberWire X, a series of specials where we highlight important security topics affecting the organizations around the world. I'm Rick Howard, the CyberWire's Chief Security Officer and Senior Analyst. Today's episode asks the question, security platforms versus best of breed point products, what should you deploy? From the beginning of the cybersecurity era, say early 1990s, security practitioners have mostly picked best of breed point products to deploy in their environments. Over time, as the number of security tools we all manage continued to grow, the complexity of those environments also grew, to the point where the process has become so difficult to control that we might not be getting the best performance for our best-of-breed solutions. Big security vendors like Checkpoint, Cisco, Fortinet, and Palo Alto Networks offered security platforms that performed the bulk of the security tasks in one device. This reduced the complexity but the individual services run from the platforms were probably not best of breed, at least for some of the services. The question we will try to answer today is, which path should security practitioners take? Stay the course with best of breed point products, change over to a prevention platform, or adopt some hybrid of both? One programming note, each CyberWire X special features two segments. In the first part, we'll hear from two CyberWire hash table subject matter experts, Mike Higgins, the CISO for Haven Health, and Greg Notch, the CISO for the National Hockey League. And in the second part, we'll hear from our show sponsor, Lior Div, the CEO for Cyber Reason, for his point of view. If you're a defender fighting to protect your organization from the dark forces of cyber attackers, it might seem like the bad guys have the advantage. To win, they only need to be successful once. As a cyber defender, you must be successful in ending attacks every single time. Cyber Reason reverses the attacker's advantage by putting the power back in your hands. Their future-ready attack platform gives defenders the wisdom to uncover, understand, and piece together multiple threats, and the precision focus to end cyber attacks instantly on computers, mobile devices, servers, and the cloud. Wherever your organization's data is being threatened, Cyber Reason is ready to win the battle against cyber attacks, with you and for you. Join them and the world's leading companies. Together, they are the defenders. Cyber Reason, end cyber attacks from endpoints to everywhere, and learn more at cyberreason.com slash cyberwire. For the past 10 years, I've been railing against the standard practice of choosing best-in-breed tools for my security stack. When I was just starting out, call it the mid-1990s, we only had three tools to choose from, a firewall, an intrusion detection system, and an antivirus application. We could afford to be choosy. But since around 2010, the number of tools InfoSec professionals manage in their security stacks range anywhere from 3 to 300, depending on the organization's size. I started to realize that we made our security environments way too complex. It was difficult to keep all of those tools up to date. And if you cornered most CISOs at a bar at some security conference somewhere, they would admit that for the tools they have deployed, they're only using about 30% capacity for each because they just don't have the resources to keep them completely deployed. We all essentially had the security equivalent of Ferraris and Porsches deployed in our security stack, but most of them were idling in the driveway and had never been taken out for a spin. Mike Higgins is the Haven Health CISO and one of the CyberWire's hash table subject matter experts. He offered this as an explanation. We're accretive. Um, we, you know, when people got rid of, uh, got their firewalls, they didn't get rid of their firewalls when they got IDS. They didn't get rid of that IDS when they got next-gen network protection. They didn't get rid of next-gen protection when they came up with machine learning AI protection. You know, you just you just add another tool on top of it uh, within the environment. That's how most companies work. That's why they end up with 100 tools, 200 tools within their environments because you just don't retire things. If you don't have the staff, complexity will kill you. Greg Notch is the National Hockey League CISO, and he's also one of the CyberWire's hash table subject matter experts. He agrees with Mike. The first time I, I took the CISO role, someone said, well, every tool you buy, you need one and a half to two bodies. And I kind of, that it didn't make sense to me at the, t- at the time, but now it makes sense. My SaaS platform actually reads from a database that I run on-prem and that thing is consumed via an API by some applications I run in Amazon, which is a 
I mean, I can list three scenarios in our environment that have that sort of thing. You're like, well, all right, where's my data? It's like, you know, this three card Monty scenario. And, and they're, they're actually just, there candidly aren't tools that manage that sort of stuff. And it happens all the time. This sounds like a problem that DevSecOps can fix. Can we automate our way out of this complexity? Here's Mike, the Haven Health CISO. It's a nice theory. It's a nice thought process, but I still think it's it's years away from implementation. I haven't seen a really, really good, um, robust DevOps setup yet. Greg has been very interested in SOAR tools to help him with this DevSecOps process, but he doesn't think they are quite there yet. You know, I, I remember seeing the SOAR tools. I was like, that's exactly what I need. And like, so does that mean that I can just leave all of the data from all of my security tools in situ and whatever tool they came from, and then just query across that? And they were like, well, not really. I was like, okay, well, give me some use cases of a SOAR tool. And everybody gives you the like, oh, you can forward a spam email to it, and it'll like break out and give you all the IOCs from that and tell you, I'm like, okay, but how about some more? If you run your own stock, I think a SOAR is an amazing tool, right? Like that's just straight up money, money in the bank. It's saving you on headcount. Like it's saving you on management overhead. Like I got it. But if you're if you're not running a sock, a sore tool is of somewhat more limited utility, and not and there's so much promise to that, that kind of automation that I'm like hoping the next iteration of that brings forth. The security industry solution to this complexity problem was the orchestration platform. These products did the bulk of the security task in one box that those 300 point products did, and at the same time reduced the complexity involved in managing all of them. That was the good news. The bad news was that those platform services were probably not best in breed, at least not for all the services offered by the platform. The debate among security practitioners is this. Can a security platform handle the bulk of your security needs even if the tools aren't best in breed? Are the services offered good enough? Here's Greg again, the National Hockey League CISO. Good enough is good enough, especially when you're talking about commoditized uh, stuff like, you know, antivirus, right? Like, I mean, you can pick whichever vendor you want, as long as you have something, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's credible. And that I'd say that's particularly true for more compliant, like technologies that are solving compliance problems and not real acute, you know, security technology problems. There are plenty of reasons why platforms don't work in every situation. Here's Mike, the Haven Health CISO. A single tool, I'm not 100% convinced is the right answer. And most single tool solution sets, companies have had extreme problems um, over time. So, you know, I'm, I'm more of a point person solution, you know, going forward. And, and I've been that way for a while. The platform solutions that are out there that are really, truly robust. I mean, there's a bunch of them out there that are trying to be, you know, one thing for everybody. Is that what you have is, I believe, is what you have is you have a core product that started and then they just started, it's like a farmhouse, right? They just started adding rooms on this stuff. And they've just started making the more product more robust. But it's all through additional acquisitions, trying to do some integration. And, and nobody does it to my level that I've seen extremely well that I think I could do it all with one fell swoop. It's got to be defense in depth. It can't be just put in one line of defense and, and they're going to do it all for me. It, it just doesn't, I don't see that as being an effective defense strategy. A single source solution, I don't think as robust as the defense in depth concepts around having point solutions. It's just, I, I haven't seen it yet. According to Greg, the platforms haven't quite figured out how to do SaaS applications yet either. It hasn't gotten the SaaS part right. Like it isn't giving me, it isn't a CASB. It isn't giving me visibility into how my users interact with Office 365, for example. Like it doesn't, it doesn't let me write policies about that or say, hey, let these guys use Dropbox or let these guys, like there is, it's still missing a few pieces to, to be, right now there's, the glue is missing. But Greg also believes that where it makes sense to deploy a platform, the reduction in complexity is worth it. The way that you buy tools isn't, it isn't like I bought a Palo Alto firewall and it's on the edge of my network and now I need several people to manage it. It's I'm consuming some of these security technologies as a service from a vendor. And so that, you know, reduces the, the headcount need somewhat. Um, so things that are plugging into my AWS environment, there's there's a little bit less body to manage there. It's not zero, but it's less. I have consistent policy 
with you know endpoints that are roaming around the world, and I have consistent policy. It's the same when they're in the office. The consensus then is that most medium to large scale organizations will deploy a hybrid approach. It is a little bit more of a hybrid approach. It is getting the complexity that you get with having single point solutions, best of breed, but it's picking major vendors for a specific you know, range of solutions. Looking at a hybrid solution saying, okay, this is my guy for network. This is my guy for endpoint. This is my guy for you know, testing, this is, you know, and look at the solutions from that standpoint versus, a, you know, all I got to do is go out and sign one contract with Symantec and I'm done and I can just go home and sleep soundly. If your firewall can handle 80% of the attacks, keep it in place. Let the IDS just handle the 20 and then let the next generation of the of network protection handle the 1%. Greg suggests a hybrid approach because the platforms are always going to lag behind point products in terms of new capabilities. But I don't see a way, at least until security tools mature significantly more than they they have already, for there not to be at least a smattering of point products involved. Another CISO friend of mine told me, he's like, listen, always do one-year contracts with your security vendors. Because, you know, what you're hoping is that your, uh, or at least the, the newfangled, you know, you know, gizmo vendors, right? What you're hoping is that they either mature and you start having addition through subtraction subtraction of other tools. Um, so you know they either build out a they build out more of their capabilities or they get bought and rolled up. As a best practice, we might use platforms for the mature meat and potatoes security products and best of breed point products for newer security products that the platforms haven't made available yet. I asked both Mike and Greg about what they would expect to find in a meat and potatoes security platform. I think endpoint antivirus, why it even exists, something called antivirus anymore, I'm not too sure. You know, it's like the next generation antivirus or whatever, the AI, those are those are a, a trusted tools and, and they need to be out there uh, as well. But, you know, the IDS systems, the firewall systems, um, for sure in there. On, on a network level or on a, on a cloud level, there's probably a couple tools out in the cloud level that are also maybe uh, adding in identity management. I need visibility on the endpoint. I need some sort of, whether it actually lives on the endpoint or not, I need some understanding of what's happening on that endpoint. I need some understanding of what's happening on my network, um, be that my on-prem server farm or you know my AWS network. Same sort of EDR or, or visibility on server infrastructure and, you know, sort of the underlying platforms that service that, whether it's VMware, AWS, or GCP, or, or Azure. Like, I need control plane view of that. I need, you know, I need some prevention tools like, you know, an anti, antivirus. I need some firewall prevention stuff. Um, preferably, my firewalls would be application aware so I can set policies about how stuff, not only what ports they go to, but what applications they're speaking. I need some way to manage those tools and collect the data from them and from all of the workloads and look across them. I need configuration management uh, security tooling, like, hey, validate that my Windows environment is somewhat correct. Validate that my AWS environment is somewhat correct. My, you know, my Unix server farm has a consistent state and its configuration is auditable. My containers have some sort of security processing. Both Mike and Greg say that the size of the organization might dictate the use of platforms or not. Here's Mike. I used to think uh, back in the day that once size fits all um, type of vendor was the way to go because all you needed was to have some security um, because the bad guys, it was just the statistics play with them, right? They were just looking for an opening and they were attacking wherever they found an opening. So having just a little bit of security was good enough. And I think most small size, mid-size companies still don't have any real security. They just have that one you know, type of solution set, either endpoint solutions for themselves or maybe some network protection, but they've really reduced the complexity and they're not running you know, robust security sets. In a large company, you've got so many ingress and egress points. You have so much risk in the company I think the best of breed solution is the way to go, um, especially best of breed when you lose when you're using defense in depth solutions. The answer is bifurcated between the two. I think it depends um, on the size of your organization first and foremost, right? If you're a very small 
company, you're going to want a platform. Even, you know, I would consider us a mid-sized company and, you know, the platform is the way to go, assuming it meets your needs. As you move up the scale from a small company to a really big company, like you'll just want your table stake stuff, network monitoring, EDR, um, you know, that kind of stuff. You want to consolidate all of that to a platform. So that's what we got from Mike and Greg sitting around the hash table. Let's move on to the second part of the show and my conversation with Lior Div from Cyber Reason, our show's sponsor. Lior, can you set the table for us? What problems do security platforms solve that we can't already solve with a host of other security point products already on the market? Yeah, I think that the market changed dramatically in the past uh, 10 years. Uh, we are shifting from IT security to cyber security. Uh, in the cyber security world, there is an adversary uh, behind the scene that uh, basically trying to manipulate everything that we put in front of them. Uh, a new approach and a new mindset is needed. And basically, in order to stop this type of hackers, because if we're going to keep using the same approach, they will have the upper hand. So tell me what, what that new mindset is. Yeah, the Cyber Reason platform is taking the approach, uh, we call it the operation-centric approach, meaning instead of uh, thinking about which type of uh, logs we are collecting or which type of viruses we can stop, uh, basically we think about it as we need to stop hackers. We need to understand what they are doing and how they are doing it. We need to be able to monitor every step that they are doing inside any network and be able to say first, hey, there is an a hacking activity inside this network. And on top of that, to be able to really identify each and every one of the steps that the hackers are doing. And when the time is right to prevent them from uh, achieving their goals and basically stop them while they're trying to do it. This method enable us to find and stop the most sophisticated attack that exists right now. Uh, one of the example, and it's a great example, this is the solar wind uh, situation. Uh, when the hackers basically assume that they can bypass any security measure that exists out there. And in our case, because we're leveraging uh, behavior analytics and the operation centric approach, we managed to, to say, hey, right now there is a hacking activity going on in this company and prevent the hackers uh, for, uh, you know, deploying their malware and to execute it. So the platform approach, you know, essentially puts together a bunch of security tools that, um, you know, it traditionally have been sold individually as single point products. And what I hear you saying about the solar winds attack is that you can combine these services uh, to look for abnormal behavior and maybe have been successful against the solar winds attack. Yes, absolutely. Think about it. In the past, what you needed to do, you needed to install something on your computer in order to prevent basically uh, malware or viruses. Uh, you need to collect log. You need to put all of them into a SIM product. Then to put a very, very smart people in front of the computer to write rules and to hope that uh, when the right alert will come, they will be uh, in front of the computer, really be ready to understand and investigate what's going on and to start and conduct a full investigation. This is kind of very the alert centric approach. Uh, basically, we're doing all of those things for our customers automatically. So we, we know how to stop things on the endpoint, uh, specifically, for example, ransomware uh, and different type of activities. Uh, we know how to collect the data in real time, unfiltered. And more importantly, we know how to make a decision out of the massive amount of data that we collected in order to say, hey, right now there is a malicious operation going on inside your organization. We collected all the necessary information, correlated and stopped the hackers of doing whatever they tried to do. So you're really talking about orchestration here. In the, you know, when I started doing this back in the 90s, we only had three tools. You know, we all had a firewall. We all had an intrusion detection system. And we all had an antivirus and we could manage those three things uh, pretty easily. But, you know, in the last 10 years, the number of security tools like people like me have to deploy ranges anywhere from five to 300, depending on your size. Uh, that's just doing man, you know, independent point products. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that the, a platform uh, point of view and the ability to correlate the data and to stop uh, attack in real time, g- give the power, I call it, give the power back to the defenders. Because even in orchestration, you need to be very, very smart to know which type of data you want to or- orchestrate and which type of data is more important. Uh, in the past, people were talking about the kill chain, basically the different steps that the hackers can do. Then that thing basically evolved to what MITRE is, is uh, doing today. And they try to map uh, more of the kill chain into more steps. We basically saying, look, we want to meet the hackers where they are. We don't just want to follow a very specific one. So needless to say that we are following the kill chain uh, method and we are following the MITRE kill chain. But there is many, many other things that the hackers can do and are doing that are not mapped to those uh, uh, basically platform. So basically we collect and analyze every activity that the hackers can do, uh, the benign and the malicious uh, activity. So we're not judging the data in advance. We just collect everything. And in real time, we can make those decisions. And if something become malicious, then we can go back in time and say, hey, this type of activity that at the beginning look very benign, now they become part of the malicious operation because the hacker is starting to leverage it. This is exactly what's happened in the SolarWind situation. In the SolarWind, the the hackers basically injected a DLL that it looked benign because it didn't do anything. It was signed and it was looked okay. Then uh, after triggering this DLL, it's starting to communicate it kind of in a semi-benign way, benign way to the outside. Uh, but then it's download uh, a payload. And from that point, it becomes super malicious. So our software knows how to track that thing uh, from the beginning to the end, from the time that it was fully benign, all the way to the point that it become malicious. But the important thing, we can tailor the operation that this DLL did all the way back to the point of time that it was installed and say, hey, it's become malicious over time. And this is the operation centric approach. And that's the reason that we decide that that thing is uh, basically malicious. And this is the reason that we are going to stop it. And from now on, every time that we will see it, we will stop it. So we don't need to do kind of the assessment again. So to your point, though, uh, if I was trying to do this with the traditional model, which is, you know, a handful uh, of point products, I'd have to do all that work myself. I'd have to have a high-end um, incident response team uh, tracking all of that telemetry across all those point products just to decide what to do. And then they'd have to work their way back through them uh, to make the changes to those point products in order to have some effect. What, you're, what I think you're saying is a platform approach uh, takes the complexity out of that and makes it easier uh, for people like me to defend my uh, organization. Absolutely. But basically, uh, the traditional approach, uh, the user of the systems needs to do a lot of work uh, and needs to be there all the time. What hackers understood that our people are not, uh, cannot be in front of system all the time. They cannot respond to any alert, uh, all the alerts all the time. So the alert-centric approach, what you do when you are a hacker, you're just making sure that or you're super quiet or you're creating so much noise that the human being will not be able to deal with it. So to make it simple, we just automate the whole process that the human being needed to do. And then we do it at scale on every machine, on every process, on every connection that's happening on, on a massive big organization. This is really kind of, changing the, the, the position of the defenders to, to have the ha- upper end against those hackers. So let's talk about that, right? Because in today's really complex environments, organizations have data scattered across multiple data islands. You know, we're still on the prem. We still have data in data centers. But now in many cases, we have data, you know, company data on employee-owned devices like phones and tablets and laptops and not to mention cloud deployments in one or more commercial clouds. And that doesn't even begin to talk about all the SaaS applications that we all have now. How does a security platform help? Can you tie into all that? Do you have a complete view of my organization? 
Yeah. So, so the way that we tackle it, uh, and we're a big believer that you have to see the full attack surface. Uh, you cannot just focus on your Windows machine or Linux machine. You, you need to have one point, one place that has the bird's eye view that see all of them and can correlate all the data that's happening in all of them in real time. So today we know how to basically protect uh, and collect data all the way from Windows, you know, all the way from XP, like all the way back, all the way to the Windows servers, Linux, different type of Linux, all, all the way, uh, you know, to your iPhone or to your Android, uh, very important to your cloud uh, container, cloud server or cloud uh, workforce. So basically any uh, processing power that a company has uh, that can process data for them or store data for them, we know how to monitor in real time. So there's going to be some combination of uh, your platform plus uh, other kinds of point products. And then, so, and then we have to deploy them, maintain them, and monitor the telemetry coming off of them. Um, I think the, the only way we can do all, manage all that complexity is through some sort of automation in the form of SOAR or some other general purpose DevSecOps tools. How does a platform plug into all that so that uh, you don't miss anything? Yeah, we're trying to uh, basically detect and to do the heavy lifting uh, uh, as much as possible. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about which data that you are tapping into. It's what you're doing with this data. And can you make decision in real time, basically transform data into actionable intelligence that you can act upon? So I think that it's not just about correlating the data. It is about the ability to make smart decision in real time uh, in order to, to protect our organization. Because today hackers moved, if in the past it was between, uh, you know, 100 days of attack and then it's become 60 days and then it become 30 days. I think that in 2020, we saw that hackers shrink the time to attack and specifically when it's come to ransomware attack, to between two to five days. So th they acting uh, very rapidly. And if you don't have this ability to really analyze in real time and make decision and respond in real time, the time to response will be just endless. Lior, does the size of an organization impact the kinds of customers that can use a security platform? In, you know, in other words, is a security platform better suited for, say, a small to medium-sized organization who don't have a lot of staff or money, uh, or as opposed to like Fortune 500 companies that have relatively infinite resources? Does it matter what size you are? Yeah, I think that it used to matter in the past, but today the cybersecurity phenomena, it's it become just so massive uh, and everybody become a target. So in the past, it was like a big banks that uh, needed to protect themselves. But today, think about it, schools that are getting hit by ransomware or hospitals that are getting hit by a ransomware. And then, you know, it's a life and death situation in many cases. So it's become, after 10 years, uh, the cybersecurity uh, phenomena become a problem of everybody, not just a small organization. It's really the full spectrum of organization. Um, so it's not just about the small organization, it's about the big organization as well. Uh, needless to say that the big organization usually have a better uh, funding, better kind of, uh, they can hire more people, but usually the footprint that they need to protect is just bigger and the problem that they need to deal with is just bigger. So this is kind of where we come to play and help them uh, as well. All good stuff, Lior. Before I let you go, uh, any final thoughts about this discussion? Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, 2021 uh, is going to be very, very interesting year. I think that uh, in 2022, we see the raise uh, of uh, or revive of uh, ransomware in a very, very active uh, kind of year. I believe that 2021 will be active as well. Uh, we saw kind of an uplift of three times more uh, attack in 2020. And I believe that hackers has a bigger appetite right now. And this is needless to say, without talking about, um, you know, the different uh, government attack group that exist out there, that we almost have kind of a cold war between the U.S. and, and you know, Russia and China. So I believe that 2021 is going to be super interesting. Uh, and, you know, our job as defenders is to make sure that uh, we reverse the adversary advantage uh, every day. 
Our thanks to Mike Higgins from Haven Health and Greg Notch from the National Hockey League for sharing their expertise. And for the Cyber Reasons, Lior Div for providing his insights and for sponsoring this program. CyberWire X is a production of the CyberWire and is proudly produced in Maryland at the startup studios of Data Tribe, where they're co-building the next generation of cybersecurity startups and technologies. Our coordinating producer is Jennifer Iben, and our executive editor is Peter Kippy. I'm Rick Howard. Thanks for listening.